AI is a subject that gets overlooked a lot in racing sims in my opinion. Mostly because not enough people care about it or they are more focused on the online aspect of the sim. Which is understandable considering the fact that most people have been playing racing sims for online racing. Which was like that since 2020. Meanwhile sims like AMS2 go the opposite direction with racing against the AI. While the online portion is not so good. They deliver in the offline aspect of the sim. But if there's one sim that gets overlooked a lot by people it's R Factor 2. A sim that has a special place in my heart for one thing and one thing only, the AI. With Le Mans Ultimate just over a month away, I thought it'd be a clever idea to get my review on RF2 out there for people to see, because I have a feeling that the developers are putting a hold on any updates for RF2 going full steam ahead with the new sim. I bought the sim back in 2016 and have acquired just under 1,300 hours of the sim, and I feel qualified to give it a review. For those new to the channel, welcome. My name is Stuart from SB Simulators and I welcome you to my show, Honest Reviews, a series that gets people like me banned from receiving free stuff and review codes by big major developers and publishers, while sending fanboys of other sims into complete meltdowns because I dare disagree with them on something they hate with a passion. Joking aside though, as the name implies, this is a series where I give my 100% honest opinion on something here, examples being not just limited to racing sims, but also other sims like flight simulators, train simulators and other simulators that you can think of. Along with equipment and third party payware add-ons for that sim. All the reveals here are funded by me and me alone. I am not paid by any of the companies mentioned here to say what they want me to say. Meaning you the viewers who want to look at things objectively will get what the thing mentioned is actually like. Not what developers and publishers want you to see. With that being said, here is my honest review on R Factor 2. Now R Factor 2 is not a new sim by any stretch. It has been out since 2013 and was originally developed by Image Space Incorporated, the same people who developed R Factor 1, before it was handed over to a small studio in the Netherlands called Studio 397 in 2016, where they added new features at the time such as DirectX 11 and virtual reality. Then in 2021, Studio 397 was acquired by a publisher called Motorsport Games. At the time, they were particularly unheard of as they went around buying up license deals with racing league organizers su such as NASCAR, IndyCar, the World Endurance Championship and the British Touring Car Championship, which they lost that license to. Let us start off with the usual of my reviews, and that is the physics, handling and the force feedback. R Factor's 2 handling feels quite immersive, which is something that I feel is missing in sims such as iRacing and ACC. If you are coming from other sims, it can take a bit of getting used to an RF2 as some of the cards in this game are a bit slidey at times. I had the same feeling on my old wheels, the G27 and the G29, back in the early days, and even here now on my Moza R9 wheelbase. Even on the front wheel powered cars, such as the BTCC cars, they can get the back end out quite a bit making it prone to cause a spin. But unlike iRacing, at least you have a fighting chance to counter the spin and save it before you lose control of the car. My advice would be to turn down the sensitivity of the accelerator pedal, assuming you are using a wheel. So that way you still have some control over the car or turn up the in-car traction control system so you can also control the power of the car coming out the hairpins or odd corners. Car Factor 2 triumphs the most to others is the tire model where no other sim can simulate tires like RF2 can. I cannot even keep count of the number of times I have locked up my brakes, only then to cause a flat spot in the car, leaving me to have to deal with it until I make a pit stop or finish the race entirely. My wheel vibrates as it reacts to a flat spot, and it truly feels like a pure sim, considering how well RF2 simulates flat spots in the tyres. Both my old Logitech D29 and my current Moza R9 wheelbase had the same feeling which tells me it is simulated really well considering the fact that a cheaper budget wheel, like the Logitech G-Force wheels, can simulate it very well. If I were to take an educated guess, I'm guessing this is what F1 drivers in particular feel when they get a flat spot after a lockup. My only complaint though is that unlike AMS2, the tyres do not seem to be reacting to aquaplaning in wet weather races like its counterpart AMS2 does. But overall, it is the best tyre model in any sim racing simulator that I've seen out there on the market. While the graphics can be hard to look at, performance-wise, RF2 runs very well on my computer on high settings, 
During test sessions with a single car, RF2 for me runs at 144 FPS, which is my monitor's maximum refresh rate, making it, in my opinion, the smoothest performance on the market. For people with cheaper PC builds, the game can run well even if you have a low to mid-tier PC. According to the system requirements on the Steam page, the lowest GPU you can run RF2 with is a GTX 950, or for AMD users, a Radeon RX 550. Both of these cards go for on average 130 euro on Amazon, so they're really cheap to buy if you cannot afford a higher end GPU. When I bought RF2, I ran it with a GTX 970. It would run just over 80 FPS, but when I got an upgrade to a GTX 1660 Ti for Christmas back in 2020, the FPS boosted well over 120 FPS with higher settings, making me believe I was playing a brand new game daily. And with my most recent upgrade this year being my Ryzen 7 CPU chip with a brand new motherboard to support it, it's able to run well over 144 FPS on high settings. But I put a cap on the FPS at my monitor refresh rate just to avoid stuttering and tearing on my monitor. Finally, I can talk about just how good the AI is in RF2. This is what got me to buy the sim. The AI is far beyond anything I've seen in any racing sim. So good in fact that I have never bothered playing online in RF2 and just stuck with racing offline against the AI. The AI in this sim will race you to the bitter end and unlike other sims, they do not back down when racing alongside you. I've seen them pulled off some of the wildest overtakes that no other AI would dare do, such as dive bombing like Daniel Ricciardo all the way from Mars and back. Even when forced to go to the outside line at the corner, I have witnessed them just keeping the foot down and trying desperately to overtake you, not just you, the player, but other AI cars around them. Let's just take a look at some of these clips of the AI racing here in action, just so you can see my point. So here's my first example here. This Radical GT3 going up against this Corvette GTE car in this multi-class race at Bahrain. I've left the settings here on, on the bottom left hand screen, but as you can see, the Radical, the Radical does not back down against the Corvette, neither does the Corvette back down. The, Cor the Radical dives down the inside of the Corvette and gets the move stick, but as you can see, the Radical just moves up to the middle to defend, which is honestly really intelligent stuff from the AI. Now watch this Mercedes, watch as he does. Dive bomb just right around the outside there, and he actually gets the move done there. That is just fantastic, like really fantastic stuff. It's only the first lap of the race at the time, but honestly, this is just so good to witness the AI actually go balls to the wall racing with each other. Like we, like all of us motorsport fans want to see. Here's another example. This C8R Corvette GTE going up against a Bentley Continental GT3 car. It was just at the it was just after shortly after the race ended, but I still think it's pretty valid to uh, play this clip. So here we have this Bentley going in the slipstream of the C8R Corvette. The Bentley moves to the inside line, but the Corvette decides he's going to hold the outside line and is unfortunately not able to uh, defend against the Bentley and the Bentley gets past him. Honestly, that is a really good overtake there and the fact that the AI are willing to uh, do whatever it takes to get past one another, it's really good to see in my opinion. So now here's a, here's a battle that I was in with an LMP2 Leisure. This is when I was racing in the LMP2 class at the time. The same race as the GT3 and the GTE cars. The Leisure up ahead goes to the inside, but I go around the outside to try and take the position. I break up with the 150 meter board and the Leisure just goes hard on the brakes there, down the inside. Not willing to, not willing to even give an inch to, to try and get past, to try and for me to get past him, which is honestly, really good stuff to see and I could watch this clip over and over again but I just have to show you other clips of the of just some glorious AI battles here in R Factor 2. Now fast forward a lap or two later and here is me in the same battle with the other uh, with the other Legier car. I get the run on him out of turn three. We're going side by side into this chicane. I go to the inside. Does the AI back down? The question is no he keeps the foot in and he's and we're still Going side by side into this into this right hander here, which is really fantastic stuff to see there. Honestly, great stuff there from the AI. They're showing remarkable intelligence here in this in R Factor 2. But not only do the AI race you to the bitter end and each other, you can also set them in the PLR file to make mistakes during the race. Here's my example here. 
this GTE Aston Martian at the Daytona road course. He goes in, he goes into this uh, right-hander here, goes in, just takes too much and spins off into the grass. And fair play as well to this AI. He's showing pretty remarkable intelligence of patiently waiting for a gap, not just pulling out in front of other cars and causing a big massive crash. He's being really patient. Now watch this sort of red colored Corvette smashes, gets smashed in the back by this green Corvette and the yellow Corvette there slams into the side from there. Leaving the Aston Martin to take uh, dr drastic measures by reversing back and getting back on onto the into the race that way. So not only do I have to give kudos for pretty much immersion there, but I also have to give kudos for pretty much getting to witness a really nice crash in our Factor 2, which is honestly plus points there for both Studio 397 and Image Space Incorporated combined for simulating really realistic AI there. Now, keep in mind, the performance of the AI varies heavily on what car and track combo you are using. Developer tracks and cars shown here have a decent AI performance, but if you are using third-party content from modders or modding groups, the AI performance will vary. You will also need to do some tweaking to the AI every time you change a car around, as sometimes third-party content can vary on performance of the AI, sometimes for better, sometimes for worse, you just don't know. However, it is worth doing all that tweaking in my opinion that once because once you do get the AI step right, they can deliver an exceptional performance as you have all seen in the clips that I have shown here. Now like every other sim, R Factor 2 has its own fair share of issues as well. Kicking off with the most notable complaint that I've seen on forums, blogs, and from content creators on YouTube, the user interface. While it is pretty to look at, it can be a bit tedious in finding what you need to find in R Factor 2. A lot of lettering in the settings is quite small and sometimes hard to see as they tend to, as they tend to hide among other settings. But after some time around navigating around the UI, it becomes easier to find what you are looking for. And despite the rather shoddy AI, it does not take away from, from the fact that how, how amazing the, re the rest of the sim is. Now graphics is another bit of a negative here that I have to mention here in my review. Let me start by saying if you're expecting graphics like you get in AC or in ACC or Project Cars for that matter, you are not going to get it here in RF2. They are very much below the modern standard of what racing sims are expected to have nowadays. But it does have some nice details including good reflections, good textures and accurate details on the car. I am running on the high settings preset and, while the, and the anti aliasing does look a bit poor, but unlike EA Sports WRC, which I reviewed previously, I can forgive the bad graphics in RF2 because it is staying somewhat consistent with its predecessor, R Factor 1. Now, overall, R Factor 2 is an absolute blast to play and a great successor to the now defunct R Factor 1. I only returned to play this over the Christmas as R Factor 2 was on my mind a lot recently. I stopped playing it a while back because of the parent company, Motorsport Games, and how they operate events like the virtual 24 hours of Le Mans, and how the server kept crashing a lot, leaving drivers like three-time F1 champion Max Verstappen boycotting the sim because of it. However, despite how hated Motorsport Games are, you can still have fun with the offline aspect of the sim as I've shown you all here in this review. The AI is the best on the market right now and for the foreseeable future, assuming no other sim comes out with better AI by that time. Yes, as one bold viewer pointed out in my uh, AMS2 review, maybe something like a, a set of Corsa 2, which is uh, up and coming as well, might come out with even better AI and dethrone R Factor 2 in the future. But for now, I fully stand by my statement of R Factor 2 being, hands down, the king of artificial intelligence, period. And if you like AMS2, then you will love R Factor 2 as it has even better AI the only reason students could dream of having in their sim. While the UI is not the best, I don't think it's fair to judge a sim as bad based on one entire aspect of it, when it has so much to offer with, with the other aspects that many people fail to give it a fair chance because of it. The sim has evolved over the years, especially in the graphics department, where it looked from looking like a piss poor PlayStation 2 game upscaled to something more beautiful to look at in recent years while still keeping to that true R Factor 1 look. Despite the future of R Factor 2 and Studio 397 remaining uncertain, 
given the financial situation with Motorsport Games, along with the staff layoffs they've had to make, as well as the recent news surrounding Toka and NASCAR terminating the license deals with the publisher, I hope Studio 397 will be able to take what they learned from R Factor 2 and apply with their upcoming project, Le Mans Ultimate, which is set to release on the 20th of February 2024 on Steam. Early gameplay has been released on YouTube, however, I will not be passing any judgement on it whatsoever until it is fully released and in my Steam library for me to play. So that is my review on Art Factor 2 and I wanted to thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this review on Art Factor 2. And I also want to thank you as well for the recent support you guys have been showing on my last two videos of Honest Reviews with being with uh, EA Sports WRC and Automobile Ballista 2. Judging by the comments here I've been receiving as well as the amount of likes that I've received, it's very obvious to me that you guys are really enjoying seeing an honest take on games like Automobile Ballista 2 and especially EA Sports WRC which for a small channel like mine with just under 100 subscribers is beyond anything that I could have imagined of me getting on, on a channel like mine. Your support means a lot to me for these videos and it shows the algorithm as well that more that you guys are enjoying it as well. So more people are going to be seeing this content thanks to the support of you guys as well as the amount of likes this video has been receiving which is also good for the algorithm. Especially with my last episode being EA Sports WRC, which has received just over 2,000 views and 38 likes, which is honestly beyond anything I could have imagined for a small channel like mine. And it goes, and it's good for the algorithm as well, because more people will get to see content like that thanks to the support of you guys. So it all, and it all, not only that, but it also encourages me to upload more episodes of Honest Reviews. So. If you have anything you want me to look at, be it a racing sim, a flight simulator, a train simulator, or a truck simulator for that matter, please do not hesitate to leave it in the comment section down below, and I will be happy to uh, get around to that to that video, to those videos then, and give you my 100% honest opinion on it, without any messing around from the corporations. So you guys will get a 100% honest opinion from me, no bullshit whatsoever. But for now, though, thank you again for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed watching the uh, much of my review on R Factor 2. And until next time, goodbye.